Hello and welcome. My name is Julia Glassman and I'm a librarian here at the Robertson branch of the Los Angeles Public Library. I'm here to welcome you to today's LA Made program, Yiddish Songs with Harriet Benish. Before we begin, we'd like to thank the National Endowment for the Humanities, our library foundation, and our behind the scenes staff for helping bring the LA Made programs to you virtually. LA Made focuses on the diverse landscape of Los Angeles highlighting the immense artistic and performance talent that has shaped the course of the city's eclectic history. If you'd like to see more of our uh, amazing programs, please visit our online calendar at lapl.org events. And for our LA Made programs, visit lapl.org slash LA Made. Our website also has blog posts and video links that highlight the library's diverse resources and upcoming programs. We'd also like to take this opportunity to recognize and acknowledge the first people of this land, honor their elders, past and present, as well as their descendants who are citizens of these nations. For more information on which territory you might reside on, check out native-land.ca. Uh, native and now on to today's program, Yiddish Songs with Harriet, Harriet Benish. During the Holocaust, at a time when millions of Jews were facing death, music found a way into their lives. They wrote poetry and composed music as they lived, fought, and died in the ghettos across Europe. Vocalist Harriet Benish, along with a professional musical ensemble, will perform these songs as they were written in their rich, colorful, and complex Yiddish language. And now let's welcome Harriet to our LA Made stage. Welcome, Harriet. Thank you. Happy to be here. All right. We're so excited. Uh, so take it away. Okay. All the songs you are about to hear were written in a Jewish ghetto, and each song has a story to be told. Although most of the composers and writers of these songs perished in the Holocaust, I don't believe that their songs need to die with them, because as you are about to hear, each song is hauntingly beautiful instilling hope in the listener. Because of the pandemic, I am unable to safely present this music to you live with my musical ensemble. However, my creative team has helped me bring to you a selection of videos of songs I have performed in past concerts. I am grateful to have this opportunity to share them with you. For your enjoyment, English subtitles will be displayed as I sing the songs written in its rich and colorful original language of Yiddish. Ghettos can be found in the United States where poverty and systemic oppression has prevented some populations from realizing their dreams. But in America, you can physically leave the ghetto if you want to. In 1939, if you lived in a ghetto in Eastern Europe, and you managed to escape to the forest, like some young people did, you had a chance to survive. But if you were caught, you were shot and killed. Imagine it is 1939 and you live in a beautiful apartment in a very upscale part of Berlin, Germany called Charlottenburg. You are having dinner with your family and there is banging on the door. You look to your mother and father for comfort but you see only fear in their faces. Your father quickly opens the door and sees two Nazi stormtroopers in uniform with black leather boots that go up to their knees. They are holding guns as they push their way past your father, yelling, Juden raus, mach schnell, which means Jews, get out, do it fast. The Nazis order you and your family to pack only a small suitcase and to leave everything else behind. You eye your grandfather's mahogany carved chess set prominently displayed in your living room. And as you move past your mother's beloved piano, you see tears slowly rolling down her cheeks. You and your family have no idea where you are being taken. Your, de your next destination, a ghetto in Poland. For people of Rwanda, Cambodia, and Syria, this story sounds all too familiar. Acts of brutality against a people all started with racism and prejudice. Knowing where racism and bigotry can take us, it is imperative that all of us become more engaged so these horrors do not happen again. 
In this first song, a mother and father are looking at their child in a cradle while they try to make sense of what is happening to their family. They have been forced to leave their home, not knowing where they are going and taking only one suitcase and the clothes on their backs. One thing for sure is that it is the beginning of a dangerous and troubled time. In Mach zu die Egelech, Close Your Little Eyes, we experience what it is like to lose your home and to be forced to flee to an unknown future as the Jews begin to enter the ghettos. The composer and writer of this song was David Bagelman. He was known as the soul of the Lodz ghetto, known for his optimism, fighting demoralization, pessimism, and depression. He wrote many songs in the ghetto expressing the tragedies of daily life. But since the singing of sad songs was forbidden, Bagelman's songs had to be sung in secret. But sometimes secrets are meant to be told. Bagelman died in 1942. During my research, I came across survivor Carol Tellerman singing Machtsudi Egelech at a 2006 University of Missouri Holocaust Remembrance concert. I will tell you more about Carol a little later in the program. Carol's daughter, Barbara Tellerman, was kind enough to share this rare recording of her mother at the age of 80, singing the song as if the memories of lives lost during the Holocaust had never left her. The video you will see at first is that of me and my ensemble, Ben Gowan on accordion and Diana Parmeter on cello. Immediately following our performance, you will see and hear Carol Tellerman's heartfelt rendition of Machzu di Egelach. <laughs> Ot kumet fegelech und kreien dorum zu kopen von dem Weg, das Pekel in der Haut, das Holz in Arsch und Brand. Mir losen sich mein Kind suchen glück. Gott vermacht und immer tun ist Nacht. Sie weit auf uns mit Scheude und mit Schreck. Mir stehen beide du in schwere, schwere Show und wissen nicht, Yes. <laughs> 
Dremlin Fagel, birds are singing. We are clearly in the ghetto. Leo Rudnitska was a young teacher and poet of the Vilna ghetto and is the only female writer in my program. I was drawn to her reason for writing this poem. Whenever there was a roundup of Jews to be taken to concentration camps, children were inevitably left behind to care for themselves. Leia Rudnitsky took in and cared for some of these children. As she soothed the children to sleep, she conceived of this poem and set it to an existing tune by the Russian Jewish composer Leib Yampolsky, who did survive. Leia Rudnitska did not. The song is a lullaby that comforts the children even though it is sung by a stranger. She thinks to herself how the mother and father of this little boy will never see their child again. Beginning in 1939, according to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, there were more than 1,000 ghettos established in Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union. There were three different types. Some ghettos were closed off by walls or by fences with barbed wire. A second type were the open ghettos, which had no walls or fences, but there were restrictions on entering and leaving. The third and more deadly were the destruction ghettos. These ghettos were tightly sealed off and existed for two to six weeks before the Germans either deported the Jews living there to death camps or shot those remaining. In the song Ghetto, we meet Casrio Broido, who was the only poet I could not find a picture of. Broido was a poet, singer, and coupletist. 
A couplet is a witty, ambiguous, political, or satirical song. Knowing this helped me understand Broido's approach to the song Ghetto. It is very much doom and gloom throughout the whole song, except when he comes to the refrain, he writes about how much he loves the ghetto and how much he will miss it. He even sets the music to the rhythm of a tango, which was popular among composers in the ghetto. Remember 80-year-old Carol Tellerman, who sang at the beginning of my program? While researching Casario Broido, I came across an interview with Carol recorded by the Yiddish Book Center's Wexler Oral History Project. Carol Tellerman was the last remaining survivor of the renowned Hazomir Chorale in Lodz, Poland, before World War II. She was well into her 90s when she was asked if she remembered the words of the song Ghetto. Not only did she remember the words, her face lit up with a memory. The notes may not have all been there, but the neshama, the soul of the ghetto was. If you would like to hear Carol's interview, you can go directly to the Wexler Oral History Project's website. You can also learn more about Carol's history through ORT's website. Carol Tellerman died at the age of 93 in 2015. Casriel Broido died in 1945. Wir stehen bei dir Wand mit Hetze, mit Verklemmter, mit rogerloser Hand, wie bei die Wedin dicke Werber. Es gucken Eugen Stahl und sind in ein Teil von der Weitkeit. Und sie bleibt in Sedelzahl die Ewigkeit. Schwer zu sein, die Wald durch ihn gemäuern. Die Schweinhobe verstellt, die Götter teuren. Vermach die Eugen noch. Den siehst du als wie nach allem, sie der Schein für euch der Wohl, die große Welt. Hörtu, ich vergesse, wenn ich immer nicht. Ich hol, ist dein Herz, ich geh dein treurig Lied. Gesehen, deine Trüge, Ist dein 
The conditions in the ghettos were uninhabitable. In the Warsaw ghetto, there were over nine people per room. In other towns, 12 to 30 people were packed into a room. Since the ghettos had no sanitation and received small rations of food and little water, most ghetto inhabitants died from disease or starvation if they were not killed first. With the horrific living conditions in the ghettos, you can imagine my surprise to find that this did not stifle the creativity of the musicians, composers, and writers forced to live in the ghettos. Yisroelik, written by Leib Rosenthal in the Vilna ghetto, is about the child peddlers, usually 11 or 12 years old, who put their lives at risk, sneaking out of the ghetto to gather food and cigarettes, gathering as much as they could in oversized coats to bring back to their families and selling the rest on the ghetto streets. Yisroelik captures the child peddler's courageous resistance. He has no time for complaints or grief. He had to be tough, keeping his spirit up with a song or a whistle. The song was first performed by Leib Rosenthal's 17-year-old sister, Chayala Rosenthal, at a memorable concert on January 18, 1942. The composer, Misha Wexler, conducted the Jewish Theater Orchestra in the Vilna Ghetto and wrote many popular ghetto songs. The composer, lyricist, and the performer were all important figures in the ghetto's cultural life. Of the three, only Chayala survived the war. Chayala took to heart the words of Yisroelik. In the last verse, he addresses his true sadness, but is quick to say, Besser Osmond Rednit, which translates as, better not talk about it. And that is exactly what Chayala did. She continued to have a successful career as a performer, but kept her past a secret from her two daughters, Nava and Zola as was the case with many Holocaust survivors. It wasn't until her daughters were adults that they discovered the truth about their uncle Labes and their mother's experiences living in the Vilna ghetto. It was Chayala's surviving daughter, Zola Piatka Schumann, who wholeheartedly gave me permission to use these pictures in my program. I must admit that being in contact with descendants of these songs has brought me closer to this music. Yes, I'm a half-crazy young girl. 
stiller, stiller, quiet, quiet. The story behind this song is fascinating. It started in the Vilna ghetto with a musical competition sponsored by the Literary Artistic Circle. The prize, extra rations of bread, sugar, or eggs. 11-year-old Alec Balkovsky won first prize with a hauntingly beautiful melody. The writer Schmirka Kaczyginski, seen here on the left with poet Abraham Sutzkever, was so moved by the tune, inspired by the boy's own suffering, that he used this tune to recount the tragedy of Ponar. Located six miles south of Vilna, Lithuanians would spend their summer holidays picking berries, mushrooms at Ponar. But between 1941 and 1944, it became the site where 70,000 Jews were murdered and placed in very wide and deep ditches that the Soviets had dug out to store emergency fuel in 1940. The song describes the pain of a mother whose husband had been taken to Panar. She soothes her child, telling him his father will return, knowing he will not. She describes the Vilna that she remembers and ends with seeing freedom's reflection in her child's face. What happened to the sensitive 11-year-old? It took a bit of digging to find that Alec Volkovsky survived moved to Israel and changed his name to Alexander Tamir. He pursued a music career and became part of a well-known piano duo with Bracha Eden. In fact, they became so well-known, they appeared on the television show, Ed Sullivan in 1958. Tamir purposely changed his name because he did not want to remember the past. And for many years, he refused to acknowledge that he even wrote the music to Stiller Stiller. Alec Volkovsky, who changed his name to Alexander Tamir, died on August 15th, 2019 in Israel at the age of 88. Stille, lohne schweigen, Quoren wachsen doll. So den Sefer pflanzt die Sonnen, Grünen See zum Blau. Sirene regelt zu, Donner zu, Zwicke weht zu Reg. Ist der Tata verschwunden und mit in das Glück. Stille Kind, mein Sveni, heute so helft mir kein Gewehn. Unser Unglück will in Sonnen sein, wie nicht verstehen. So haben brech es euch die Jungen, so haben Zwisses euch zusammen, neu zu uns erbaut, gib es so schön. Fingerfinland, Kommen und un hat's gebracht. Ist der Tata heimvoll mit Blumen und seht nur die Nacht. Gott ist schön, du hast euch stammen, blüht in uns der Zahn. Bleib voll aus und Sie kennt euch, O Pona, wie die Wilja geschmitter, täuscht euch den Pein. Sie grüßt euch durch Litter, ist in Jammerein. Zwerte Heusche, Wurzelrunen, Wunder. Kummer geschwört, dich ruft 
seine Musen stumm. Wenn ich sich siehst, wie schnell ist vor uns verrat. Seh'n den Frühling soll der Säune wie ein Herbster Blatt. Soll der Qual sich ruhig fließen, still sei und erhaft. Mit der Freiheit kommt der Tater, schlosche Kind mein Schlaf. Wie der Wirbel freut er, wie der Bäume grün man Leifbad Freiheit lacht auf dein Gesicht, auf dein Gesicht. In a suburb of Berlin near a beautiful lake called Der Wannsee, Viewed by Berliners as a summer hotspot for more than 100 years, high-ranking German leaders met at the Wannsee Conference to determine a more effective way to rid Eastern Europe of the entire Jewish population. The implementation of the final solution, the plan to murder all European Jews began in late 1941. As the Germans systematically destroyed the ghettos, the Jews living in the ghettos were either shot and placed in mass graves located nearby or deported to killing centers such as Auschwitz. A small minority of Jews from ghettos were sent to forced labor camps and concentration camps. In this photo, we see the Jews of the Lodz ghetto boarding trains to the Chelmo death camp. The Lodz ghetto was the last major ghetto to be destroyed by the Germans in August of 1944. In the end, the Jews who were still alive in 1942 were transported from the ghettos to the gas chambers of Auschwitz, Sorbibor, and Treblinka, with their last destination being the furnace of a crematorium. Dos Elentekind. The true story behind this song is one of the most heartwarming stories I read. Rachel Pupko Krinsky was a young mother and an educated teacher who knew many languages. Rachel's husband had been killed by the Germans and was forced to make the heart-wrenching decision to save her 18-month-old daughter, Sarah, who she affectionately called Sorala, by hiding her outside the ghetto walls. Schmerka Kaczyginski, the poet of this song, and Rachela were members of the Paper Brigade, a group of intellectuals who risked their lives to conceal Vilna's Judaic treasures from Nazi vandals. After learning that Rachela had hidden her only child, Sarah, who she affectionately called Sorala, outside of the ghetto walls with Rachela's trusted Polish housekeeper, Kaczyginski was inspired to write The Lonely Child as a tribute to Sarah and all Jewish children that had been forced into hiding by the war. The poem was set to music by composer Janko Krimsky, who did not survive. Kaczyginski did survive the war, but was later killed in a plane crash in 1954. In the song, Kaczyginski describes Sorola looking for her mother and father and remembering the dark look on her mother's face when her father did not return. Finally, she imagines her mother calling out to her and hearing her father's footsteps. Sorola is comforted as she imagines her mother singing her a lullaby. Sarah and her mother were reunited after the war. Although so much time had passed, Sarah did not recognize her mother. In 1946, Kaczyginski, without any accompaniment, recorded Das Elente Kind in a displaced persons camp. 
and, de and dedicated the song to Rachel Pupko Krinsky and her daughter Sorla. Fast forward 50 years, Sarah, now a middle-aged woman, is visiting the Holocaust Museum in Washington, DC. She comes across an exhibit of recordings from the Vilna Ghetto. Shmerka Kaczyginski singing The Lonely Child was one of them. It was at this moment that Sarah realized that the song was about her. I must admit, because of this story, this is the first song I chose to learn. I have been in communication with Alex Wall, the granddaughter of the late Rachel Pukokrinsky, and I'm happy to report that I finally got to meet her when she attended a concert I gave at Sonoma State University in October of 2021. Alex is in the process of creating a documentary based on both her grandmother and mother's lives entitled The Lonely Child. To see a trailer of this work in progress, go to www.lonelychildmovie.com. There are four verses in The Lonely Child, but I will be singing only three because in the fourth verse, you will hear what Sarah heard while exploring music of the Vilna Ghetto at the Holocaust Museum, a recording of Schmerka Kaczyginski singing Dos Elentikint, The Lonely Child. <laughs> Mir versorgt und lohnt nicht zu ruhen. Und mal, man, mein Mama, wo bist du? Er sucht dich ein Sonnenlos, ruft dich dein Kind. Sie wird uns wollen in Feld und David. Er sucht dich ein Sonnenlos, ruft dich dein Kind. Der Mond 
wir doch morgen vergessen uns nicht ein. Was tat er, was Mame Gerhard hat und fein, der Mond sieht das Morgen, vergesst das nicht ein. Das ernte Kind, Mechaber Kaczerginski, Musik Janko Krimski, gesungen durch Mechaber, Amatone Sorle Krimsken in New York und Agerus der Mannen in New York. On April 18, 1943, according to Yad Vashem, Israel's official memorial to the Jewish victims of the Nazi Holocaust, news arrived that the Warsaw Ghetto would be liquidated. On April 19, the first night of Passover, the Warsaw Uprising began to oppose Nazi Germany's efforts to transport the remaining Jews to death camps. The Germans were taken by surprise as the uprising lasted nearly a month. But in the end, the uprising failed. Here we have Jews in the ghetto fighting back with guns smuggled into the ghetto. The last two songs are known as the partisan songs. The partisans were the young people who escaped the ghettos and concentration camps. Living in the forest, these young partisans began obtaining weapons to fight back. Still die Nacht ist euch gestärnt, the quiet night is full of stars, was written by Hirsch Glick, a young Vilna poet. Glick was so moved by the heroic deeds of the female resistance fighter Witke Kempner, he wrote this song about the first successful diversionary sabotage act of the Jewish partisans of Vilna. Vidga on the far right is seen here with her future husband, Abba Kovner, founder of the United Partisan Organization. Vidga and fellow partisan Itzik Matskevich successfully blew up a train that carried 200 German soldiers. It was Vidga who in the dark of the night surveyed the muddy, cold woods to determine the best spot to lay the homemade explosives. Witka was not the only heroine in that dark period. While Witka survived, we also honored those who did not. Sonia Madisker lived as an Aryan in the city carrying messages, food and guns to the partisans. Leonie Kasparotsky, whose photo I could not find, was a beautiful young girl who flirted with the Germans and even persuaded them to carry her valises filled with weapons. Zofia Yameka, a girl from a prominent Hasidic family, joined a partisan group in the Warsaw Ghetto. Zofia performed countless rescue missions. And Rosa Robota, who helped blow up one of the four crematoriums of Birkenau, also perished. Still die Nacht ist euch gestärnt, is a tribute to these women. <laughs> Die Nacht ist uns gestellt und der Frost hat gebrannt. Sie gedeist du wie ich hab dich gelernt. Halt wenn er speier in die Hand.
gestillt, geschossen und getroffen. Und ihr knüppelte Pistol, ein alter Fröhlichkeit mit Waffen. Verraten hat sie mit einer Kuh. Glick also wrote Zognit Kainma, Do Not Ever Say. At the age of 21, Glick was so inspired by the news of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, he began to write the words to Zognit Kainma. Set to the music of a Soviet melody with a marching rhythm, it had an immediate impact and spread rapidly throughout the Vilna Ghetto. People sang it in underground hideouts. They hummed the melody in front of German guards during their slave labor work. The song spread to other ghettos and even reached the concentration camps. The words to the song became a source of hope and a hymn of the Jewish resistance fighters. In 1943, when the Vilna ghetto was liquidated, Glick was deported to Estonia and taken to several concentration camps. In 1944, Hirsch Glick escaped into the forest to join the partisan fighters, but was never heard from again. It is a tradition for survivors to stand on the last verse. I ask you all to stand, if you are able, in solidarity with the remaining Holocaust survivors of this world. Please join me on the last verse, which will be displayed in the video in transliteration along with the English translation. Zognit kein malas du gäst im letzten Weg, hat schimmlin bleier noch verstell im bleue Teig, weil kommen wird noch unser reus gedenkte Schor, zwett ab heut und unser Trott wir sein in da. Von grünen Palmenland bis weißen Land von Schnee, wir kommen und mit unsere Pein, mit unsere Weh. Und wo gefallen ist der Spritz von unser Blut, schwarzen weh tut unsere Gwura, unser Mut. Wett die Morgensohn bei Gild in uns dem Heint und der Nächten wird verschwinden mit dem Feind. Nur wohl versammeln wird der Sohn und der Kajor, wie ein Parol, so ging das Lied von Dorn zu Dorn. Da 
das Lied geschrieben ist mit Blut im Hund, ich bleib. Es ist nicht kein Lied von der Freude, Leute frei. Das Worte Fuchsfischen fallen dicke Band. Das Lied gesungen mit einer Garnis in die Hand. Remember Zola Piatka Schumann, the niece of the composer Leif Rosenthal, who wrote Yisroelik, the song about the child peddlers? Zola lives in Cape Town, South Africa. She is both a composer and singer, and the composer and writer of the beautiful Holocaust remembrance song you are about to hear called Hert sich zu, We Will Remember You. I introduced Zola to the conductor of the Los Angeles Jewish Community Children's Choir, Dr. Michelle Green Wilner, who created a virtual arrangement of Zola's song for her choir. I would like to complete this program by sharing this uplifting virtual performance performed by the Los Angeles Jewish Community Children's Choir, conducted by Dr. Michelle Green Wilner.
I want to thank my accompanist Ben Gowan on accordion and Diana Parmeter on cello for their sensitive musical support, as well as my video editor, Sean Wood, who created the lovely subtitles for this program. A big thank you to Paul Levitt, my sound engineer, who always makes me sound better, and to my student intern, Ariella blum Lember for her editing skills. I also want to acknowledge Temple Israel of Long Beach, California, and the Art Theater of Long Beach, California, for providing me with a space to share these rarely performed songs that is an important part of my Jewish heritage. And a big thank you to the Los Angeles Central Library's staff, especially to Steve Orozco and Kevin Awakuni, who provided me with the technical support that helped me immensely. If you are interested in obtaining a bibliography of the materials used in this program, or you wish to have a copy of the websites mentioned in this program, please email me at harrietbenish at gmail.com. If you would like more information on my live performances, log on to my website, www.harrietbenish.com. And thank you all for allowing me to share this music with you today. Oh my goodness, Harriet, thank you so much. What a beautiful, moving uh, program. Ashane Dong, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone has any questions, you can type them in the comment section, uh, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, uh, there should be a space for you to type any questions. While we're waiting to see if any questions come in, I just want to read some of the comments that we got because these are really lovely. Um, Barbara Tellerman writes, beautiful, moving program. Bravo, Harriet Benish, oh, there we go, for your performance and uh, presentation of this history. Uh, Anne Elson Elsner writes, whoa, just accidentally came across this. Fantastic. Thank you for presenting. I love that uh, we can, someone can just accidentally stumble upon uh, Yiddish songs. I mean, that's, that's, that's beautiful. Uh, Rachel Faulkner writes, thank you so much for this beautiful performance. My grandparents spoke Yiddish, but didn't teach my parents. It's actually exactly my situation too. Uh, I'm trying to learn on my own now and pick up the pieces. These songs are a gift. Mm. Again, thank you so much. Um, yeah, well, I guess if there's no questions, we'll go ahead and close it out. Um, Ashane Dog again, Harriet, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for the gift of these songs and this history. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us to, for today's LA Made program. And remember to check out the library's uh, online calendar at lapl.org slash events. Also, don't forget to check out our next LA Made program on Thursday, June 2nd at 4 p.m., where we welcome a performance by students of the Silver Lake Conservatory of Music. LAPL is proud to present a concert by the SCM All-Stars in tribute to Rock and, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Billy Preston. Following the performance, a pre-recorded tour of the Silver Lake Conservatory of Music facility will be given by one of its staff members. Hope you can join us. All right, until next time, we truly appreciate all of your support. The success of LA Made and all of our library programs could not happen without viewers like you. So thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>